everyone, this is Holly. In this video, I'll be showing you one of my attempts at the tall and skinny shimmy technique that I created as a participant in the Soap Challenge Club. This was my practice soap, so if you'd like to see how my actual entry turned out, I'll cut it at the very end of this video. The Soap Challenge Club is hosted by Amy Warden and has a new challenge each month. I've been participating in Amy's challenges for quite some time, and I always learn something new about soap making. There's also an amazing community of soap makers who participate each month, and they are always so helpful and encouraging. So be sure to check out the link below to the Soap Challenge Club website where you can find out about the current challenge or purchase access to all the past tutorials. The tall and skinny shimmy technique was created by Tatiana Serco of Creative Soaps by Stesso. Tatiana was our guest instructor for this technique and is such an incredibly talented soap maker. Be sure to check out the links below to her Instagram and blog where she shares beautiful photos and details about her work. Before I get started, I wanted to take a second to emphasize the importance of protecting your eyes and skin when making soap, even while cleaning up. Lye and raw soap can burn your skin and damage your eyes, so be sure to protect yourself and keep kids and pets away while making soap. If you'd like more information on lye safety and basic soap making, I always provide links below my videos to a couple of really good video series on basic soap making. I wanted the color palette for this soap to be mint green and navy blue, so I used green oxide, indigo root powder, and some activated charcoal for my colors. I mixed each of these with a little sunflower oil and stirred until they were dissolved really well. For this technique, it's very important that the soap stay fluid for the entire pour. I chose to use my blender for only a few pulses and then continued stirring while I separated and colored the soap. One of the challenges with this technique is knowing when it's time to stop blending or stirring. I typically watch for a uniform consistency with no beads of oil separating on the blender shaft. I recently watched a YouTube video by Lisa from I Dream in Soap that provides some great tips to help with this. Lisa demonstrates how to recognize the various stages from emulsion all the way to thick trace, and she even shows you how to deal with false trace. I'll provide a link below in case you'd like to check out Lisa's video. Once the soap had barely reached emulsion, I separated the batter into two equal parts, one for green and one for blue. I wanted to mention that I used a slow-moving recipe provided to us by the Soap Challenge Club, so since it's not mine to share, I won't be able to list it below. To create the navy blue soap, I first added the indigo root powder until I was satisfied with the blue color. I then added just a bit of the activated charcoal to darken it. To create a light green soap, I used about 1 8 teaspoon of the green oxide added to 2 1⁄2 cups of soap. After coloring the soap, I added some eucalyptus and peppermint essential oils for fragrance. I continued hand stirring the soap and checking for a very light trace, which took about another 45 minutes. And by very light trace, I mean when I dripped some soap back onto itself using my spoon, the very thin line of soap on top disappeared almost immediately. Once I felt like the soap was ready to pour, I then separated each color into seven equal cups. As part of the advanced category, we were required to pour at least three different colors or combinations of colors seven different times, 
rotating the mold each time. I know this probably sounds a bit confusing, and honestly, I'm terrible at explaining just about anything, but hopefully it will all make sense when you see me pour the soap. To keep the mold from slipping, I used a rubber mat, and to elevate one side of the mold, I used a half inch piece of acrylic. As you'll see when I pour the soap, for each side, I made four passes with the blue, then four passes with the green, and then I created an in-the-pot swirl with the remaining soap and continued pouring until the cup was empty. I then turned the mold and repeated this process for a total of seven times. I rotated my entire mold because my second camera was set up and focused on the side closest to me. However, you could simply orient the mold where it's easy to pour down both sides, leave the mold in place, and just move whatever you're using to elevate the mold to the other side. After I finished pouring the soap, I preheated my oven to the lowest temperature it would go, about 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I turned the oven off and placed the mold inside, leaving it until the next day. I usually use a warm oven just to force the soap through gel phase so the colors are darker and I'm able to cut the soap a bit sooner. I forgot to film this when I lined my mold, so I wanted to mention it here. My mold was a bit wider than I wanted for this technique, so I added some cardboard to each side. My modified mold size was 10 inches long by 2 inches wide and 3.5 inches tall. 